Good afternoon, Robert Carter, Sandy District Technology Coach here, looking at IXL. In this video, we'd like to look at the really massive amounts of data that come out of this wonderful uh, practice platform for all major content areas. So in order to do this, let's start in the analytics section. Now the dashboard is going to give you a snapshot of what's going on with your class. You can see you got these wonderful graphics, the number of questions that this uh, class has answered to this point, the, the uh, total amount of skills that are mastered and proficiency, and a distribution of the time, the home, and uh, the school distribution. You could see um, the usage of analytics for this particular classroom and a little tip sheet or try something new will pop up every time as well too. Down at the bottom, we've got a bar graph for student learning activity. Progress towards your next milestone is a fun little attribute of this platform. Plus additional resources. There's a lot of great stuff in here coming from webinars to for PD for this platform, different stories about how teachers have implemented this platform in their classrooms. Um, and a lot of quick start guides. And a lot of these guys have uh, a lot of built-in graphics and they're really, really strong uh, instructional tools. So if you're still wondering about things past this short video, this is a nice resource here. Let's actually go ahead and proceed to our diagnostic overview. Now the diagnostic overview is broken up into these different categories, reading, st reading strategies, vocabulary, writing and grammar mechanics. Um, each student is given um, kind of a sliding scale graph here that uh, gives you their current uh, levels in those particular categories. Um, you see on many of these you're going to see keep, diagnos keep diagnosing to narrow down the overall ELA level. You'll find that these will shrink as you continue to have students work on the platform. The system's able to pull a better view of what's going on with that particular student. Now, let's actually take a look inside one of the students here. Now, this actually takes those levels that are break, broken apart in those graphs and gives you a snapshot of the student. Now, in this particular case, you've got our reading level strategies, and it looks like they just haven't proceeded to writing strategies at this point. And uh, you see the keep diagnosing to narrow down level. Now, keep in mind, um, in this case, it's a fifth grade classroom, what do they mean a level of 500 represents readiness to being working on uh, on fifth grade skills? So um, this particular student is in that general area for most things um, with some work to do, but certainly some advancement to go from there. You change from student to stu student to student in the top right hand corner. And you can see that the levels adjust every time we adjust the student. Looking further, let's look at trouble spots. <laughs> trouble spots are nice because they will give you particular areas to work on. And this, this particular one is determined the main idea and the ability to help more than three students at once. So that means we've got three identified students out of my roster who are struggling with this particular um, task. Underneath here, you'll see the students' names, um, whoever they meet, and this could, this number can vary depending on the results of your students. As you scroll down, you'll find different um, standards that the students may or may not may be struggling with, and great ways to address multiple students who are struggling in a particular area. Looking further, we can look at our scores and our score grids. This is a nice area where you could see your students. You can see where they're scoring. This particular um, class just has gotten, has gotten up and running on IXL. Um, scrolling down, you'll see their results pop up. And as the year goes on, you're going to have all sorts of data here to utilize. Looking further, let's take a look at the skills category. Look at skills practiced. Tells us what has been practiced to this point, how many students, how many answers, and how much time that was spent on each one. You can search for a specific skill. If you're finding maybe it with another diagnostic tool that students are struggling in one particular area, 
we can take a look to see how much time they spent on IXL on that. Maybe you'll find they haven't spent much time on that and you want to uh, direct them to that specific area, either in centers or small group or intervention. Let's look further at real time is the other area I want to finish off with. Real time is real nice. You can see exactly who's online right now, how many questions that the student has answered, and uh, basically what skill that they're practicing on. Um, you can see this number is going up as this video goes on. You can see their progress, you know, kind of pump them up, get them excited. We could see how many students are there. Uh, and the fact that I've got one student who doesn't seem to be progressing. Um, and as well, IXL will flag maybe there's students who may need help. So um, maybe there's a student who struggled, got multiple questions wrong, and you need to intervene before the frustration level gets too high. Now, in this particular video, it has been important for me to cover some of the core functions of being able to find data on the IXL platform. Now, that starts with the dashboard and looking at analytics for your class, being able to see how many questions, see what your progress is in a, as a class. And then it goes on to looking at some of the trouble spots and being able to target instruction for small groups of students. And looking at the diagnostics with the various levels of each students and deciding where you need to focus on as an instructor. I hope that's been covered in this video. And if you need further help, please email me or look towards the frequently asked questions and resources built into.